What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. The weekend is upon us. Labor Day weekend. The last day today of August. I can't wait for fall to come, honestly. I'm a big fall person. This summer, I'm over summer. Summer's about to be officially, officially. Well, technically to me, summer is already done to me. It ain't officially done, but it, to me, it's over. Kids are going back to school now. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, so anyway, getting into this episode of GH. So Ryan is still terrorizing Ava from the prison. Uh, she's getting a, she got a letter from him. Julian was trying to tell her to tear it up and stuff like that. Ava decided not to tear up the letter. My thing about it is <laughs> she wanted to know from Alexis, is there some law where she could stop getting letters from inmates or prisoners or whatever? A uh, Alexis basically told her, just put refuse, refusal or whatever, refused on the envelope or whatever, or go down or whatever and let them know that you don't want any letters from them. So you have to do. Um, I think Ava should use his letters as evidence because she's still out on bail. For stabbing him. She still has to face a trial for stabbing him and stuff like that. So I say use the evidence as letters. You know, use the um the letters as evidence. And it might help her case. I mean, she was under duress when she stabbed him, and it could prove that he's taunting her and harassing her, and you know, it could work in her favor. So I say keep him. Call Scott, let him know, okay. He's sending me letters. Show it to the judge. Show it to the courts. Get a restraining order. Well, she can go to the courts and get them to put an order on him to not contact her in any way. I mean, he probably don't care because Ryan going to be in prison the rest of his life anyway. So, ain't really nothing they could do to him. <laughs> so, he probably don't care at this point. See, if it was anybody else who had like 15, 20 years in prison, if you keep trying to contact the victim or whatever like that, then they could just throw more time on you. Or whatever, but with Ryan, he's gonna be there the rest of his little natural life anyway, so it ain't no big deal to him. Um, but um, anyway, moving on from that, Alexis need to watch her back. I'm just saying uh, uh, with this Kendra girl, because clearly Kendra is out for blood at this point. I mean, she's trying to disguise herself like she's some personal trainer or fitness guru or whatever the hell she want to call herself trying to put Alexis on this you know diet plan and all this stuff Alexis need to I'm telling you these people need to start doing background checks on new people that come into their life whether it be a new co-worker a new trainer whoever new chef whatever yeah I need to start doing background checks on these people like this girl is clearly more than likely working for uh, Kiefer. Not working for, but she's probably related to Kiefer. I wouldn't put it past them to say that she's some type of sister or something like that that nobody ever knew about or cousin or she some got some connections on because she was very invested in that hit and run article. So she got something to do with Kiefer. Um, but Alexis need to be very careful. Shiloh is still trying to, you know, work this whole Kiefer angle with Alexis and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure he probably sicked that girl on Alexis. Um, and Alexis was like, when she seen him at the PCPD, she was like, oh, I ain't representing him. I said, exactly. He got a quarter pointed attorney anyway. And Alexis can't represent him because it's a conflict of interest. I mean, he harassed both of her daughters, so... And harassed her herself, so of course she wouldn't dare represent that bum. Um, speaking of, Shiloh is hell bent on getting out of jail, out of prison. He's still sitting there taunting people, taunting Chase about Willow and Wiley, and he's so certain that he's not going to prison and stuff, all because of um, Peter. Even if Shiloh were to somehow, if Peter were to somehow manage to get Shiloh out and Shiloh was able to walk free, he wouldn't be free for long because only two things are going to happen to Shiloh at this point. A, you're going to prison or B, somebody's going to kill you. There's no way in the world if you beat these charges, you're just going to walk out scot-free and continue to harass and terrorize people. Because if the criminal justice system fails, then you already know people are going to take law into their own hands. 
and he has more than enough enemies. So one of them are just probably going to snap and kill him. You know what I mean? So it's like either way you're going down. How you go down is entirely up to him. I mean, if I were him, I would just stay my behind in prison because you're probably more safer in there. Unless all them little big boys that's been up in there for 20 and 30 years don't get to you first. But, you know, you know how they are you're in prison around shower time and phone checks and lights out and all that. I'm just saying you might want to, you know, guard yourself, you know. Get a couple phone books, strap it around you, do something. You know, you might get shanked while you're up in there. You know, you protect yourself, you know what I mean? But prison is the better, you know, place to be other than on the street with a whole bunch of angry folk that might want to kill you. I'm just saying, you might want to take your chances in Pentonville. Obviously, you made a couple friends in there. You got Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and Nail in there. You got Crazy Ass Ryan, so you're in all good company up in there. Harmony, delusions of grandeur. You got all these delusional folks in one in one prison, a co-ed prison at that, because apparently that's what Pettenville is, a co-ed. I mean, you got women all up in the male side of the prison. That Where they do that at, I don't know. But um, it's in Shiloh's best interest to stay in there, because if you get out, you, you, you're not going to be free for long. You, you're going to be going to glory before you know it. You're going to that upper room before you know it. Um, Peter. How the hell does Peter think he's going to get him out of this? This man is facing so many felony charges. It's enough to put him away for life. How do you plan on getting him out from underneath all these charges? Like That's the million dollar question. How? Like What influence do you have that you can get him out from under a whole stack of felony charges? Like, unless your name is Houdini, I would like to see that happen. Like, how you, how is he going to manage that? Unless you got a judge in the pocket or something, I don't know. How you going to do that? But um, I had a feeling that Peter confessing everything to Maxie in bed, I knew that was going to be a dream. I knew it. I said, because ain't no way he going to do it that easy. They never do on the soap. Trust me. They It's very, very rare for anybody to confess anything to the right person out of just pure guilt. You know what I'm saying? Without it being some type of dream sequence or something. And of course it was. He was sitting in bed telling Maxie everything. Jason came up in there and shot him. I said, of course. As soon as I seen Jason bust in there and shoot him, I said, yep, it's a dream. I been knew it was a dream anyway because they was in bed. So I was like, yeah, it's a dream. Yeah, I knew it had to be a dream. Peter's just dumb. I'm like, you might as well just tell this woman the truth. Like, it's such a minor thing. Like, I would even lie a little bit. I'll make some of the truth in there with a little bit of a lie. I would say that they forced me to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would say, come up with something. I'm just saying, like, but you might as well just tell her, like, why are you letting this slime black, you know, blackmail you? Because if you help him get out of prison, you're just going to be in a worse state. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no guarantee he's going to keep your secret. And you know how blackmailers are. Once they get what they want, they're going to want more. They're just going to get greedy and greedy and greedy and greedy. That's just how blackmailers are. So it's in his best interest to just tell the truth and take away Shiloh's power. Because if you take away his power, you don't have to help him get out. But if you help him get out and everybody finds out not only that you held Jason and Drew captive and you were working with Helena and Faison on this, but you also helped Shiloh get out of prison, you're going to have most of the people in that town coming for your neck. So why add more enemies to your list? You know what I'm saying? You get to live free and clear. You have a business. You have a, a girlfriend. You got Jason and Drew. They're not paying you no mind at this point. They chose to let it go. But if you open up those can of worms again and you let Shiloh get out, all bets are off. They're going to be coming for you. Anna is not going to be able to save you next time. She managed to save him the first time when she taught Jason how to kill him. You know what I mean? She's not going to be able to do that again. So it's in your best bet to just tell Maxie the truth and come on out with it. Because if you add more to it, by helping Shiloh, you, you're making it worse, a thousand times worse. So don't do it to yourself. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, I'm happy that, you know, it was crazy when I saw James sitting with Mac and Felicia. At first, I had to look. I said, who this big blonde boy? And then I seen him and I'm like, oh, that's James. I said, he got big. You know, that boy got, you know, pretty tall now, a little. Well, he was sitting down, but he looked like he getting big. Um... I'm happy that, you know, Felicia is supportive of Matt going back to the PCPD because I was kind of nervous. I didn't know how she was going to take it when he told her that he was going to be chief of detectives. But she was pretty supportive. And I like that, you know, it shows the maturity of their relationship. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that obviously, you know, she's in love with him. He's in love with her and they support each other. 
I know that she was a little disappointed because for the last six years, she's gotten used to working side by side with him at the floating rib. But, you know, she told him that she was going to do well by herself. You know, she was just going to suck it up. She added some vegan stuff to the menu or whatever, which I think is pretty dope. You know, give other people choices and stuff. That way they ain't got to clog their arteries all the time. They can have some healthy options as well, um, which was cool. But I'm happy that, you know, she was happy for him because she knows that he missed law enforcement and stuff. As much as he loves being at the floating rib, he missed being in law enforcement, putting bad guys away. You know, that's his first love. Other than his family, that's being a cop is his first love. And I always felt like it was jacked up that he got fired anyway. You know what I mean? So it's good that he has a second chance to come back and, you know, do what he loves to do for however long he wants to do it. And I'm happy that Maxie was, you know, of course, happy for him as well. So that was always a good thing. I like that little family moment between them. That was pretty cool. I guess Christina is still on this self-discovery journey. I guess she's still running around talking about she's still trying to find herself. Christina, how long are you going to find yourself? I'm just saying, she talked about this months ago, about her finding herself and what she want to do. I'm like, okay, this was all months ago to a year ago. You still haven't found yourself yet? How long does it take? I'm just saying, like, what are we doing with Christina? You know, she's finally out from under Shiloh's thumb and, you know, she's back working at the bar again. So what's next? That's the billion dollar question I would like answered. Like, what are they doing with her next? I would just hate for them to waste Lexi's talent. She's such a good actress. And it's like, you know, I could see a bunch of people on the show doing more. See, the problem with a show like this, they got too many people. They, you know, when you got too many people, it's hard to rotate the story and give people a good story because you got so many people that you have to appease. So it's kind of tough to do, you know. Um, but I wish that they would do more with Christina. And where the hell is Valerie? What was the whole point of recasting Valerie if we're never going to see her? You know what I mean? Like, where the hell is Val? She just made detective and poof, gone just like that. A mess. Um, instead of having Chase investigate the Barry situation, they could have had Valerie investigate it. Chase is already dealing with the Shiloh investigation, so let her deal with the Barry investigation. Hello. Easy fix. There you go. It'll get her feet wet as a new detective for her to be investigating a, a, a crime on her own. Um, yeah, I just wish that they would do something with some of these characters instead of just having them float around. Jason and Sam are still sitting on a little bubble, I guess, about being happy and whatnot. Um, I don't blame Jason because he cares about Elizabeth and all them. So, you know, he doesn't want to see Franco hurt Cameron. And he sees what this is doing to them. And Franco obviously does not want to go back as Franco. He likes being Drew. And he's happy that Shiloh and them, you know, implanted those memories back in him and stuff like that. But, you know, it's kind of hard for everybody else. And, you know, Drew's not, I don't think he's purposely trying to be an a-hole, but it's like, he thinks he's Drew. And he just wants people to leave him alone and let him be Drew. He doesn't want to be Franco. But he's not going to have a choice in the matter at this point. Um, You could tell, Kim, somebody asked me this question in the comment section, I think yesterday or the other day. They said, does the man make the memories or is it the memories that's making the man or something to that effect? And I think that's what it is for Kim. I don't think it's Franco. I think it's the memories that Drew possessed. That's what's drawing her in. It's the memories. And, you know, Liz eventually, I think, is going to start getting suspicious of her. Um, because she's definitely suspicious as it is because Kim has been avoiding, you know, Liz's phone calls and stuff. And then when she finally bumped into her, you know, Kim was hoping that all of this could be resolved before she leave town. Um, but you could tell, like, I think she's not into Franco, him, you know, the man. It's the memories that he's possessing. That's what's drawing her in. You know what I mean? It's, that's why she wanted to rush the whole wedding with Julian and get married and stuff like that. She's trying to rush everything because I think she's starting to fall into that trap because not too long ago, she wanted every man in, in town to impregnate her. I mean, she was running to Drew, the actual Drew to get her pregnant. She ran to Julian to get her pregnant. You could tell she was looking at Shiloh at one point to pro possibly get her pregnant until she found out about his mess. Um, Kim has just been all over the place. So I could definitely see her falling for Franco, but she's really trying to fall for Drew's old memories. That's really what she's falling for. And Franco sitting there talking about, oh, he leaving town. Guess again. 
guess again, you're not leaving town. Not if Elizabeth has anything to say about it. This is the Liz I wanted to see. Liz has been suppressing this side of her for quite some time. And now we're seeing it come back out in full effect. This is the schemer that I wanted to see. See, Liz over the years used to scheme and manipulate to get a man, but sometimes it was men that weren't emotionally available for her and she would plot and scheme to get them. At least this time she's using her wickedness for good. You know what I mean? She's, she's using her wicked manipulation tactics to get a man who actually belongs to her. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I think it's a good thing. She's fighting for her husband and she's doing whatever she got to do. And I knew she was going to do it too. I knew she was going to have try to have him committed. I knew it because as his wife, obviously he doesn't have all his mental faculties. So she got Scott to draw up the paperwork and they're going to go to court to get guardianship of Franco. So they can make decisions for him, have him committed, have him locked up. I said, good girl, smart, very astute. I knew she would. I knew it. I knew it wouldn't take long for that for that uh, schemer to come out of her, and I'm happy. At least she's using her powers for good this time. Kudos to Elizabeth. I know it's going to be hard for her to do this because she doesn't really want to do this, but desperate times calls for desperate measures, so I don't blame her. You got to do what you got to do. We all know Franco is not going to be pleased when he has to be, you know, forced against his will. We all know he's going to be pissed, but you know what? Until they find Andre, they got to put Frank on ice because they know that the ankle monitor was only going to last for so long. And this is the perfect solution. I'm surprised Scott didn't think of this before. You know what I'm saying? See, leave it to Liz to come up with some good stuff. Leave it to her to think of some manipulative tactic. And I'm surprised Scott didn't think of it. I mean, he has a wife, so legally she's his next of kin. She has power of attorney. She can do these things. But in all honesty, though, Drew 2012 needs to stop thinking that Alan favored Jason. When it came to AJ and stuff, yeah, they kind of did. But he needs to realize they did not know about you. How many times they got to tell you that? He just don't want to hear it. So at this point, it's whatever. Let him think what he want. You know, he wants to keep thinking AJ, uh, Alan and Monica and all them quarter mains didn't care, which is far from the truth. Had they known about you, of course, they would have took you in. They're freaking multimillionaires. They can afford to take in as many kids as they want. I mean, hell, they took in Emily. Alan took in Skye, and she was a fully grown-ass woman. And he still adopted a grown woman. So if he could do all that, what makes you think he wouldn't have took you in? They were all about family. As crazy as that family is, and as much as they bicker and stuff and banter, they're all about family. When the chips are down, they got each other back. So, of course, they would have took you in, like, had they known about you. They just did not know. You know what I mean? But if he don't want to accept that, then that's on him. You know, that's not on them. But it's whatever. Um, but anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I hope you all have a great, great Friday. Have a great Labor Day weekend. I will see you all Tuesday because Monday is a repeat episode. So I'll see you all Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. Peace.